This is Richard Hoffman, and today we're going to be talking about buying a machine gun. Uh, if you live in the United States, you can own the, a machine gun according to federal law. It depends on what your state says. Some of the states let you own machine guns, some do not. Uh, to start this all off, we're going to go off. Um, ready whenever you are. It's ready. work the different categories or the different types of machine guns uh, not rifles compared to sub guns but the ATF classifications of, of machine guns uh, there is transferable machine guns which is the first class which any law-abiding citizen who can pass a 4473 and whose state allows them to own a machine gun can own one. Uh, there is pre-sample, pre, pre-May 86 dealer sample machine guns, which have some different rules. You have to be, uh, sorry, I got a bug flying around me. Uh, you have to be a, um, licensed dealer with an SOT to buy these. You do not need a uh, law enforcement signature. And when you get rid of your license, if, you are, if your license is set up as a sole proprietor, you can keep those pre-May 86 dealer samples until you want to sell them. Then they have to be sold to another dealer. Uh, the other types are post-86 dealer samples, which you need a law letter, which means a, a chief law enforcement officer of a police department or government agency needs to say, we want you to demonstrate that Uzi submachine gun to us. Then you can buy one. And you can take it and you can demonstrate it to them. Then you can keep it. You can do whatever. You can keep it afterwards. Um, you don't need to give it up afterwards. You get to keep it uh, until you get rid of your license. When you get rid of your license, you got to get rid of the post samples, no matter whether you're a sole proprietor or not. There is another classification of machine guns, and those are machine guns on Form 5s, I believe they are. And that is, say somebody is going through their grandfather stuff from World War II and they find a Schmeiser machine gun. They can take that machine gun. They're not allowed to own it. They, if it's not paper, if it doesn't have, if it's not transferable, they can't own it. But you can take that machine gun and got him donate it to a museum, and then it would go on a Form 5. Uh, government agencies also have their machine guns on Form 5s. Uh, and that's law enforcement. That's not the military. Military is a whole different deal. Um, but those are the four classes of machine guns. Um, the ones you, if you're just an individual, you want to know about is the transferables. And that means they're fully transferable to anybody who can own one who is legally allowed to own one. The process for buying one is, first you decide the machine gun you want, submachine gun, whatever it is. Um, then you find one, you make a deal to buy it, and depending on the deal, you might have to pay 100% up front uh, more and more, it's becoming more common to do 50% up front and then 50% when the original paperwork is approved. Now, if you're buying in state, I'm in Florida. If I'm an individual in Florida and I buy a machine gun from an individual in Florida, we can do a Form 4, which is the transfer form, with a $200 tax, we can do it direct from them to me. If you buy a submachine or a machine gun, transferable machine gun that is out of state, if it is on a Form 3, 
which is the dealer transfer form. Once a dealer gets a machine gun in, they transfer it into themselves on a Form 4. Then they can transfer it to another dealer out of state, in state, wherever, on a Form 3, tax-exempt transfer. Those go much faster. So if you buy a machine gun from an individual out of state, it has to go to a dealer doesn't have to be in their state if somebody from Florida wants to buy a machine gun. They can come to me and say, I found this machine gun in Iowa. I want to buy it. Okay, you make the deal. Uh, let me know who to send my license to, uh, who to do the paperwork with, and we'll do the paperwork. It can come from an individual to in Iowa to me, in Florida as a dealer because I'm a dealer. Um, some people think it has to go to a dealer in Iowa and they go from that dealer to me. It does not. It can go right from an individual in, in a different state to me. Then I can do the Form 4 from me to you. Uh, form 4s right now, the last one I got back took about a year. Uh, they are way, way behind on Form 4s. It's the same form that you do for a suppressor or a short barrel that you buy from somebody, not a title, not a uh, Form 1, which is you make it. The 86 machine gun band banned any new machine guns made after, I think it's May of 1986, from being transferred to an individual. So any of the new stuff, and there's not a whole lot of new stuff, you can't buy. You can't have it. It's got to be a post-86 dealer sample. Um, the transfer tax is $200. Now, say you... You're in Florida in an individual and you buy a machine gun from somebody in Iowa and they say, I have to transfer it to a dealer in Iowa, then they can transfer it to your dealer in Florida, then they can transfer it to you. There would be a $200 transfer tax from them to the dealer, usually on a Form 4. Usually, Form 4s to a dealer come through much faster. There are three to four months, I think the last one I got was. Dealer to dealer is a couple of weeks, maybe a month on a Form 3, and then it would go from the dealer in Florida to you individually in Florida, resident of Florida. That would be another 200 bucks. So there's $400 transfer tax if you do it that way. Uh, so you really don't want to do it that way. I mean, the best way is to find one on a Form 3. Then it doesn't matter where it is in the country. It can go in about a month from wherever they are, wherever that dealer is, to, to the dealer in your state, and then get it on a Form 4 going to you. That's about all there is to it. It's not... It's a pain in the ass going through all the paperwork. Um, the chief law enforcement officer... In your area, you used to have to get them to sign off saying you can own a machine gun. You don't anymore. When your dealer fills out the Form 4, there's a copy that gets sent to your local law enforcement. We don't give a fuck if he gets it or not. You, I simply put them in the mail. I did what I got to do. I don't give a shit if they get them or not. It's not my problem. It's the post office's problem. Uh, I've had ATF ask me, you know, how do you know I got you, they got them? I don't give a shit. I don't care. All it says on the form is I have to mail it to the chief law enforcement officer of that area. Did it. Done. Go the hell away. Um, so it's much easier now to buy a machine gun than it was when did they do that? Four or five years ago, they changed the laws uh, and made it so you don't have to get a law enforcement signature. You just have to inform them. 
that you got it. And half the information on the form to the law enforcement is redacted. Um, uh, you know, price is the big thing. Machine guns are not cheap. I mean, compared to other guns, the way other guns are going nowadays, they're not that far out of the ballpark. Um, let's see, that right there, that is an MK760. They're about seven or eight grand right now. Uh, that Lanchester, you don't see them for sale. Uh, the last one I saw was about 15 grand, I think, for sale. The Uzis, they're anywhere from, if you see one for 12 grand, buy it. Don't, don't think about it. Just buy it because you're going to get a good deal. Uh, up to about 18 grand at the dealers when they're all done. Um, you know, M16s, 15 to 35,000, depending on what you get. Um, Mac 10s are the Mac guns are in the six to eight thousand dollar range. Um, MP5s, you're best off to get a transferable sear, uh, and a transferable HK sear. They're running in the 30s. I think the last one I transferred was 32 grand. Um, there's all kinds of subguns out there. Risings are cheap. Um, Stens are cheap. Stens are fun guns. They're relative. They're seven grand or something. Um, and you cannot take them out of state without permission from ATF first. There is a form, and I can never remember what the number of the damn form is. I've got it saved on my computer. Um, if you're an individual and you want to take it out of state, say you want to go to a shoot, you have to fill this form in. You can fill the form out for, I think they last for a year. So I've got customers who have properties in other states that they take them to, and they just fill out the form for a year, send it in, and every year they resubmit all the forms. Doesn't cost anything. Uh, that way they can just, whenever they want, they can just take it up to wherever they're going and bring it back. Um, but that's about all there is to buying a subgun. You know, if it's legal in your state, you can federally, it's legal to buy one. Uh, you have a nice day. Uh, please like and subscribe this video. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments. I'll try to get them answered for you. Thanks a lot. Bye.